So now we've looked at some of the technical detail of the lunge. I want to talk about something that's a little bit less tangible in a way. It's your efficiency and your flow around the court. We've got to have that lunge as our fundamental element that's sitting there, but we don't want it to be blocky. We don't want it to be stiff. We don't want it to be kind of clunking around. So I love to talk about movement as a, like it's, a, it's very graceful. It's like you watch, you watch a, a good boxer around a ring. It looks like a good squash player. You know, there's this element of lightness in the feet. There's this element of all the moving parts are working together. And I love to talk about the lower half, the hips and the knees, doing this dance, doing this little bit of flow and efficiency. Because when that lower half is, is light and flowing, there's so much you can do on the court. You can get to balls better. You can execute the shot better. And we don't want to hear that, that kind of clunking, heavy-footed movement. I'm going to do a little bit of movement around the court, which is called ghosting. So ghosting is a, a huge part of the game. It's, it's a part that you'll get a good club player doing quite a bit of. And you should enjoy it. You should get wrapped up in the ghosting because if you watch me doing some of this ghosting, it's very efficient, it's very flowing. So in regard to some of those words and that gracefulness, have a look at the feet and look how it's looking around the court. We've talked about the lunges I've said, see some of those technical elements, but for me it's about the flow now. So if I'm ghosting, I'm moving very smoothly through. I'm lunging, I'm coming out, I'm lunging, and you see I can do that for a long time. And there's generally six or seven areas I can move to, across to here, and I'll just do a couple more. And see how my lower half is dancing. I'm really flowing, I'm connecting my lower half to my swing. There's a lovely connection there. And you should be able to do that for, you know, sets. 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, then have a break and do it again. I would highly recommend doing a little bit of training with that. One big flaw, one, one caveat I wanna mention here is over rotation. So if I'm moving into the ball and I'm trying to flow, it is very easy to let my core go rubbery. And what that happens, if I'm moving here and I let it go, I lose it, my shoulders lose it, my back foot's completely gone out the way, I've, I've over-rotated, and I've kind of lost the element of what it is. So be mindful of over-rotation. If you're trying to get flow and rhythm, there's still a little bit that has to lock. And the lock, lock is a tough word because I don't want it to be stiff, I don't want it to be firm, but if you watch me moving to some backhands, see how my core and my shoulders are locking at a certain point. I'm flowing in the lower half, my follow through is going, but that midsection is quite locked in. You know, it's not, not stiff, but it's firm. And that's a key element about not over rotating. We don't want to over rotate. Couple more, boom. See that middle section there, solid. And I just, I'd, I'd love to see my players and I'd love to see you trying that getting that lower half dancing with efficiency and flow around the court. There's just one more little element I want to mention, and it's for the slightly more advanced player, but I just want to talk about it now, and there are a series of videos based solely on this part. So I've talked a lot about the lunge, I've talked a lot about the flow, it's in the back corners. And actually sometimes in the back corners, you'll see good players will do this, and what the difference is, is this. There's a base and a move out, and here, there's a base, and what I mean by a base, it's two-footed. So up until now, I've talked about the lunge. In the back corners, for the more advanced players, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it immediately, but I think it's worth mentioning now, So if that ball goes to the back and you can get two-footed, that helps massively on the shot. But like I said, there's a whole series of videos based on that, but think about your flow and efficiency and gliding and gracefulness around the court. Consider the over rotation and, and the bad stuff that happens. See if you can get that nice flow and practice some ghosting. Go and practice it, go and enjoy it. I know it's, it might not seem a thing to enjoy, but when you get it without a ball and you're moving around, you put the ball in, you know what, your muscle memory and your training is gonna be linking into it. Have you ever wondered what Jonah Barrington, Nick Matthew and Jonathan Power all have in common? They might all be world number ones, but they're also all coaches on squashskills.com. Now, Squash Skills is the online training platform that's designed to give amateur players the insight and knowledge to take their games to a whole different level. So if you've been struggling with your game or you're stuck in a bit of a rut, 
or you're wondering how to improve, we've got you covered. With over 4,000 videos from some of the biggest names in the sport, as well as the ultimate training app, complete with every single squash exercise under the sun, we're there to take care of you and ensure that you can improve your squash no matter what your level. We're so confident that we can improve your understanding of the game that we'll even give you a 14-day money-back guaranteed if you're not completely satisfied. So if you're looking to take your game to a whole new level in 2024, be sure to check out squashskills.com today.